slight change in the track, so we've swapped one Dan for another. Um, this is Dan Wiseman, and he's going to introduce what he's going to talk about, because I don't know. Hi, hello, <laughs> Enjoy. Everyone. Thank you for having me today. Yep, um, my name's Dan, so my talk is on WordPress security basics. Um, so uh, who's this for? I'm going to tell you who this is for in a minute. A little bit about myself. Uh, there's going to be a load of statistics in here. Um, this is going to be all coming from my past experience, and you'll hear a bit about that. Um, and hopefully at the end of the session, you'll take away some of the WordPress security basics uh, that we are talking about. So yeah, so who is this for? So today, um, I'm really talking, aiming this at uh, small businesses, uh, site owners, um, that maybe run the business and manage the website themselves. I'm not talking about enterprise level protection. I'm not talking about corporate level stuff. Um, you know, we're a small digital marketing agency. We've got 10 years of experience. Um, and this really is, I'm not an expert in security. I'm a digital marketing expert um, that happens to use WordPress an awful lot. Um, so this is going to be about um, some of the things that I found over the last 10 years that are commonplace that go wrong with a WordPress website and how you can fix them. Um, if you are a pro, then hopefully you'll find some of the statistics interesting and you can take that away and teach your team about the, the, the things that they should be doing. If you're new to WordPress, then hopefully there'll be some basics in there to keep you going. Um, if you haven't ever heard of WordPress, which I'll be very surprised if you come to a WordPress talk, um, WordPress is a content management system. It's one of the most popular content management systems in the world. Um, there's some statistics I found. Um, the grey bar is the percentage of all websites using uh, different platforms. So WordPress powers something like 30% of all websites. Um, the green bar is um, the, the share of content management system market. So 60% of all sites that are using a content management system are using WordPress. So as a result, um, it's hugely popular. Uh, you know, millions and millions and millions of sites, um, and that makes it a big shiny target for hackers. So the short answer to is WordPress secure is probably no, it's not unless you do some of these basic things, and then hopefully it's a bit more secure. Um, so who am I? Uh, I run a company called Webwise Media. Um, we're a digital marketing agency. I set it up whilst I was at university at Exeter about 10 years ago. Um, first ever website I did probably looked something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Maybe not quite as bad. Uh, I got paid 100 quid for it. Did it for a mate. I thought that was amazing. I got paid, amazing. Um, I built another one for another friend, another one for another friend, and then some businesses. And before you knew it, I was running a, a team of experts and making, working on all sorts of interesting projects. Um, so yeah, so just to reiterate, I'm not a security expert. These are just things that I've picked up along the way. Um, Outside of digital marketing, I do a bit of mentoring, a bit of coaching. Um, this was a podcast that I did at BBC uh, recently about uh, giving young people careers advice and stuff like that. So I have an interest outside of digital marketing, entrepreneurship and technology. So I'm very much looking at this today as um, how can I get my team to make sure they're using WordPress correctly and, and, and doing them correct technical things without going into too much of the hardcore coding stuff. Okay, so straight in. Uh, number one, updating WordPress, really basic. You'd be amazed at how many of our clients buy a website from us. You know, we spend months working on it, we design it, we make it look really nice. We think about their brand, their marketing aspects, all that sort of stuff. We launch the website and then we never hear from them again. And then five years later, they come back and they say, oh, my WordPress site's got hacked and they're, they're running version three and we're on version six or whatever it is. And they've just not touched the website for years and years and years. And you'd be amazed at how many times that happens. You know, we've got support plans and they're there for a reason, but people think that they can do it. So keeping WordPress up to date is massively important. Um, it, uh, these are the uh, statistics I actually grabbed from last night. Only 40% of all WordPress sites are actually running the most latest version. Only 40%. That's that's massive chunk of vulnerability there. So really simple. Keep WordPress up to date. And it isn't just about the core WordPress system. Um, so it, the Panama. Uh, papers leak in 2016, which affected 2.6 terabytes of data, 11.5 million documents, and 4.8 million emails. And the cause, 
a website that wasn't running the latest version of the slider revolution plugin. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with um, what a plugin is, it's a little bit of uh, extra code that you can plug into your website that adds some functionality. Slider revolution plugin is simply something that lets you as a, as a site admin add a slideshow to your website, and that caused that massive hack. So update core WordPress, update your plugins. Um, there's three things that I look for when I'm installing a new plugin on a client site. The first is how many people are using that plugin. So if you've got fewer than 10 active installations, as it says there, this is the, this is the WordPress plugin directory. If you've only got a few people using it, you know it's probably not a, a mainstream popular plugin. Um, has it been tested with the latest version of WordPress? I think we're on 5.2 is the latest version of WordPress, so that one would not be a good indicator. And then finally, I would look at any reviews. Um, so it's just a sort of a three-point check that I run by. Um, do your research, use plugins that are up to date with WordPress, highly reviewed and used by many sites. Once you've got your plugins on your site, um, keep them up to date. Don't use anything that's been abandoned, and if you do stop using the plugin, make sure you delete it. Don't just deactivate it, delete it as well. Um, on that topic, uh, you might be tempted to go away and install an all-in-one security plugin, um, which you might hope would solve all of your WordPress security problems. Um, that some, some are good. Um, I will always say be careful um, because following this advice, really, um, you only want to install plugins unless you absolutely have to. Every plugin you install on a WordPress site is a potential vulnerability, it's a potential security risk. So, you know, the irony is you might be installing a plugin to, uh, to solve security and actually opening up more gaps. Um, there are better ways of doing uh, uh, security that these plugins often do. For example, if you wanted to install a firewall on the site, you could install a firewall plugin. Um, I'd actually recommend this service, which is called Cloudfare. I'm sure many of you have heard of Cloudfare, but they have a ton of features and a ton of products in there. Um, free to sign up, and there's some premium uh, features on there. Um, the firewall sits on the server side rather, on, rather than on the WordPress side. So it's a much stronger way of doing it. Um, check that out if you're, if you're that way inclined. Um, so updating WordPress, just to summarize that little section. Keep core WordPress up to date with the latest version. Don't use untrustworthy or abandoned plugins. Keep the plugins you do use updated and consider using a service like Cloudflare. Um, multitude of server-side security benefits rather than installing an all-in-one security plugin. Okay, the next one is very dull. Passwords, passwords, passwords. But I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, in my experience, this is the main reason our clients' sites get hacked. And no one ever wants to admit that they use the rubbish password. And that was the reason that they've been redirected to some questionable websites and all sorts of dodgy stuff going on. But this is always the main reason. Um, one stat I found was that 81% of attacks are based on insecure or stolen passwords being the main tactic used. Um, and a few years ago, I actually found an interesting meme, which I always recommend to my clients to have a look at. So this is the traditional way you come up with a password. You might replace uh, O's with zeros and A's with fours and add a random number in there and put a random capital letter in there to come up with a, what you think is a strong password. Well, actually, a uh, thousand guesses a second, though, I don't know if that's possible. I don't know, have no idea on that. But that is, to a computer, relatively easy to guess and very hard for you to remember. And you tend to end up writing your password down. And then that means that someone could find that bit of paper or break into your text file or whatever. And you're creating yourself all sorts of vulnerabilities. This is an old way of doing it. Um, a much better way of doing it might be to come up with four random words which supposedly at the same rate of guesses is very hard for a computer to guess and very easy for us as human beings to remember. So through 20 years of effort, we success successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess. So think about that next time you're choosing a password. And it's not just passwords, it's also usernames that are getting attacked. So admin, admin, administrator, test and root. Don't use those as your usernames. Um, one blog that I follow recommends using your email um, as the login ID rather than a username because it's usually much more difficult to guess. 
Um, an interesting story I heard about a few years ago, um, actually from a, a, a WordPress security expert, was saying about how well do you actually know your web developer or the people that are in control of your website because they've had examples where um, they're a reasonably large organization, maybe they've got 10 people or so that manage the website and someone from the website company's phoned up and said, oh, hi, John, I'm uh, updating your website for you, but we can't get in. Can you give me a username and password? Because they've used some of the right credentials there, you've handed the password over the phone, and then that person is then into your site maliciously. You might have thought that was coming from your developer just because it, they, you happen to know that they used the developer's name. So, yeah. Don't, that's a basic one, but don't give your password out unless you're absolutely sure you have to do that and, and you know who they are. I mean, us as web developers, we don't ask for passwords, so anyone that's doing that, you've got to question it in the first place. Um, this is the tricky one, really, and this is why I brought passwords up, because everyone knows you've got to keep a strong password, you've got to maintain minimum password strengths. But we know that as technical people, but do our users know that? And we've got quite a few examples where we've got a site, we've got a membership site with about 2,000 users, probably about 10 to 15 volunteer administrators. Now they're volunteers, so you know how much training you can actually give them is a, is a logistical challenge, really. It's not a technical challenge, it is a matter of can we get them all in a room and explain to them what minimum password strength is. Um, in this particular example, actually, they're, they're um, reasonably elderly. Um, they're not very technical at all. Um, the, the subject matter is historical novels. Um, and in that example, you know, it's very difficult to get your, your administrators to maintain minimum standards of password strength and, and, and um, renewing passwords over a number of times. So I always encourage my clients to think carefully about how you can educate the people that are using your site to do that. Um, don't have the answers on how you do that. That would depend on your individual organisation, but really recommend thinking about that. It's about internal communications. Um, there are, again, there are plugins where you can force minimum password strength, but whether or not that is actually going to create another hole or not is something to be decided. Um, and the other thing along with that is um, actually getting a plugin that limits the amount of logging attempts that someone can make. So quite often, with that example I just gave, um, someone will be there trying to get in and they hit the wrong password several times. And because they don't quite remember their password because they use the dodgy uh, replacing the zeros and the ones and the exclamation marks, um, they hit a wall that says you've tried to enter your password too many times. Now, strange enough, that isn't a feature out of the box with WordPress. You actually need a plugin to be installed to say when someone tries five times, we're going to stop them from trying again for a number of hours. Just by doing that, you'll, you'll cut out a huge amount of WordPress attacks, and I'll show you a stat on that in a moment. So passwords. Educate your team about password security. What is a good, strong password? Force the use of strong passwords if you can, and there are plugins to do this. Change passwords every so often. Limit the login attempts. Um, and if you can protect yourself about, against plugin vulnerability, so updating plugins, or what I said earlier on, um, brute force attacks, which is trying to log in with the wrong username and password over and over again until you get the right one, you're accounting for over 70% of the security problems, says wordfence.com. So it's a huge gap fulfilled just on those two things. Um, hosting. So 41% were hacked for a security vulnerability on their hosting platforms, which is mad. Um, if you've ever handled hosting, there are millions of companies out there, and they range from free hosting up to hundreds of pounds per month. Um, I'll tell you a little bit of a story about my own experience on this. So um, last few Januaries, I've gone on a digital nomading trip, which is very exciting. And I go to Thailand and I go to a sort of a co-working hub on a tropical island. I usually take a project with me um, and spend a few weeks out there getting some serious work done in a, in a lovely sunny uh, island. Part of that, I get to meet a lot of technical people and a lot of business owners um, that are traveling about and doing a similar thing. And one guy I met was called Kevin, and he'd set up a, a, a company called Review Signal. And Review Signal was really interesting. Um, what it does is it scrapes Twitter sentiment data, so it gets all this data in from Twitter and works out what people are saying about all the big web hosting companies out there. And he uses 
loads of algorithms, puts all that together and basically ranks website hosting. Um, on his website, it's very transparent. You can actually see the algorithm that he uses, got loads of information on there about his methodology. Um, and he also writes an industry report every year, which um, the big companies subscribe to. They actually pay him to write the report. He does loads of testing on the web on the website platform to work out, uh, you know, whether it's uh, value for money, what the performance is like, what the security is like, all that sort of stuff. So. My point with this really is it's incredibly easy using something like this to find a reputable host and to get a good understanding of what their security profile looks like. Um, this is just, uh, I just took a screenshot last night of some of the top ones. You can actually go into that data and work out where it, you know, where that uh, individual host is doing well or where they need to improve. Um, yeah, so it's just a useful tool. One stat I found said that over 36% of all WordPress sites are served over HTTPS. Um, I think that's mad. I think that should be 100% that stat. You know, I think it was about three or four years ago now that we wrote a blog article about how you should be using HTTPS and Google is punishing you in rankings if you don't serve your site over HTTPS. So anyone that's not doing that now, three or three or four years later, I think that's absolutely mad. So, um, and WordPress themselves have said that this is a goal that they're going to try and build the infrastructure. Don't ask me how it works, but build the infrastructure to gear it towards ensuring people are doing this. Um, so make sure you get a hosting provider that allows your website to be served over HTTPS. Um, you also get that little warning now in Chrome at the top that says this site is not, not secure if it's not sent over that, which is a big pain for your customers. Um, your host should also provide backups. The amount of backups is debatable. Our sort of highest level hosting has three or four a day, which I think is quite excessive. You know, once a day is probably about right for most hosting companies. Um, depends, of course, on the size and complexity of your site and your organization. Um, once a day, but it's not just the amount of times it backs up, it's also the how far back you um, keep those backups. So we've had examples before where we've had a customer's website get hacked and it's one of the bad customers that don't really check their website very often. It might have been two weeks before they've realized. Um, so you know, in that example, if, if the backups aren't, don't go back two weeks, we're a bit out of luck there. So checking the number of backups. I'm sure we'll all be checking our websites out a lot quicker than two weeks, so fine. Um, if you don't, if your host, if you don't want to just rely on your host backup, this is a great plugin as well. Again, install it and then delete it once you've used it. Um, Updraft Plus is a premium plugin, so it's paid for, so you, you kind of know that it's a bit more trustworthy. But what it actually will do is it will take a copy of your WordPress installation, put it up on the cloud, and then when you're ready to uh, restore that, it will just pull it back down. And you can do that actually to a new, new uh, site space. So we actually use this tool sometimes when we've got to move a WordPress site out of a development area onto a live server. Just a nice tool. So um, some key stats then. 41% of hacked WordPress were hacked for a security vulnerability on their hosting platform. To get a good host, make sure you've got backups. 29% were hacked via a security issue in a theme. Now, I've not talked about themes, and mainly that's because we tend to build our themes for our clients from scratch. Um, but if you are using an off-the-shelf theme, you want to make sure the theme itself is updated regularly, um, and you want to make sure you've done your research to make sure that theme does not have any vulnerabilities built into it. Um, 22% were hacked via security issue in plugins, so you're keeping your plugins up to date, you're not using untrustworthy plugins, um, and 8% were hacked because they had weak password. For us, as I say, that probably is the top one, so their stats are around the other way for us. Um, and there that is, slightly different uh, data set there from wordfence.com, but um, you can see how they're compromised. Plugins is massive. You know, just by following those plugin rules, you're taking out a huge percentage of potential hacks. Brute force is the logins, uh, password logins that I mentioned, and then not keeping WordPress core updated um, to the latest version is the key one. There's a few on there like FTP and stuff like that, which would be to do with your host, making sure you're keeping your FTP password secure, things like that. So to summarize, keep WordPress and plugins up to date. Don't use out-of-date plugins, abandon plugins, untrustworthy plugins, delete unused plugins from your site. Get a strong, memorable password, change your password regularly, and educate your users about password security. Consider a service like Cloudflare for server-side protection, a firewall, for example. 
don't use an untrustworthy theme, hire a developer to build a bespoke one, little plug. <laughs> um, get a good host and serve your site over HTTPS. Um, backups regularly. And yeah, that's me done. Thank you very much for having me today. Right, do we have any questions from Dan? I think it's probably also worth mentioning content security policy. Yeah. So it's quite easy to implement on the website, but it's probably quite important for WordPress, and that will limit what the browser will allow the connections to. Okay, so restricting the browser to only, for example, allow images and text, and not any other malicious files like executables. So, so we're more about limiting it to certain domains. Okay, yeah, cool. So only say, like, you're only allowed iPhone, you're only allowed scripts from the local host. And cool. They're not allowed to run sure. or anything like that. Yeah. That's quite a powerful tool for I think, people hacking and Yeah, I think one of the key, uh, one of the most common hacks that I read about was, uh, and we actually had this recently with a client, was a redirect to a malicious site. So I suppose if you're preventing, uh, if you've built something into WordPress to prevent a redirect to anything other than a certain domain, yeah. great. Have you got a recommended plugin for that? Uh, so I don't use WordPress, sure. but um, I'm sure there is a plugin. Yeah. I mean, it's just a header that's sent to the browser. Cool. I mean, like uh, British Airways, um, they had uh, they were using a tracking code from some other company, I think, um, and that tracking code got changed, and that's how they were harvesting all the logs. Right. Got yeah. I mean, they they could have got around that with either CSP or an integrity tag on their script. Okay. Uh, Cool. If they've had a better process around managing uh, the updates and stuff, for it, then that it would have mitigated that attack completely. Cool. Thank you very much. Go on, sir. I actually have a question. Hi. Um, is there, again, I'm also not a techie, so please don't shoot me if this is a stupid question, but um, if you limit the access to the admin area to certain IPs, yeah. would that also help? Yeah, we've, we've dabbled with that in the past, but okay. you tend to find that people move around a lot and end up, you know, I, I work from London, Exeter, and everywhere in between. So, you know, you're often on different IPs, and I find that quite frustrating when you've got to log into a site and it changes. So that can be a problem, definitely. Okay. Um, but it is a recommended solution. Yeah, whitelisting IPs is a, is a good way of doing it. The other thing as well uh, I didn't mention is actually changing uh, the forward slash where you log in. Um, Everyone knows that it's uh, for WordPress, usually it's forward slash WP login or forward slash WP admin. Um, you might change that, but most hackers are aware that the site may also exist under admin, manage, you know, dashboard, any of those sort of keywords. So if you're going to do that, you're going to pick, got to pick something totally random, I suppose. Two-factor authentication, yeah, another one. Um, I think that was, I was trying to stay, steer away from too technical, but yeah, that's a big one. There is actually f tons of blogs on like 22 steps and things like that. I've given you sort of three or four of the ones that I've found to be useful, but yeah, that's another one. Just um, two-factor authentication. I'm somebody, I have to, I have on most of our sites two-factor authentication. And I'm forever putting in that six-digit code. Yeah. There's easier ways of doing that. Make make the digital marketers' lives easier of giving them maybe just tap a number on your phone like what Google does for e yeah. entry and stuff. Just think about the end user with two-factor yeah. authentication, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a, always a balance between annoying our customers and not getting them hacked. <laughs> <laughs> Got another question, hang on. Uh, yeah, just to that, there's a, a file called xmlrpc.php. Yeah. Which you don't need it because it's about programmatically controlling WordPress. Okay. Cool. And that will stop probably 90% of the resources. Great. I didn't know that one. I've seen the file in the system, but I didn't know what it did. It's so there we go. Cool. Okay. Cool. Great. Yeah, cool. Well, there's a whole bunch of them now. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to add to that. I was just going to think about the JSON API if you're not using that and turn it off because that's not the tech that. Very similar to the XML. Cool. Thank you. You talked about very te te technical ways of doing it. What about vetting your uh, observer? Yeah, definitely. Because that's the, 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 you give them access to absolutely everything. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people trust the guy yeah. just down the street or yeah, I think I think 
I kind of tried to touch on that with the um, how well do you know your developer slide um, in the example they gave where, you know, if your developer's a big organisation, you don't know whether one person in there phoning up might be getting the, the details maliciously. You don't, you don't know. So, yeah, having a good relationship with your developer. And, you know, that's kind of where we said, you know, customers that have gone away for three years and come back to us, we've not had a good relationship with them. They, they've sort of ditched us for three years and then come back when the website's broke. And I do think maintaining a good relationship with a good trusted developer is a, is a key part of this, definitely. Thank you for that. Oh. Well, this debate at work Move over to static site generators. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know enough about it to talk about the pros and cons. Um, is, it, is it about speed? Is that the reason you're looking into it? Well, you get speed, but ultimately you're massively reducing the number of vulnerabilities. Yeah. Yeah, you're not accessing databases and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think if you can find a workflow that works for your organisation and makes that process of keeping that site up to date painless, then that sounds great. Yeah, um, how you know the reason we pick WordPress is it's about future proof for us. Uh, our clients can go off and go and find someone else to work with, and they don't have to um, you know get uh, rebuild from scratch. They can just have another WordPress developer come and pick it up. If it's a similar situation, you're using something that is widely available and open source, then I would always recommend it definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a bit trickier to support. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> there are some plugins that WordPress that you create that static site from your computer. Yeah. So as long as you haven't got you know, all the PHP functionality in the back end. Yeah. Then you can do WordPress. Yeah. And it's not a case of database, it's just flat files. I was just thinking back to uh, your point, which was about um, keeping your web developers on side and that sort of thing. I think it's important for, I mean, as you probably know, developing any projects, the ones that work out best are the ones where the, the client is really involved from the get-go. Yeah. And they always turn out better. You know, it's nothing worse than the client. You, you deliver the first version of it and then suddenly the client's all interested in it. Yeah. And uh, they're not happy with what we've done because they um, managed to translate their, um, their, their vision. Yeah. to what they thought yeah. they were going to get. We, uh, we have... But, but from, a, from a protection point of view for a business, it's always good to have a handle I think, on, on your hosting. So make sure that you've got the the root password to the hosting and you can delete the credentials of the um, of the uh, of the developer if yeah. you need to. Yeah. So I know those people that you know have, have been with the developer and then they fall out with them yeah. and then all of a sudden they can't have got the ability to take yeah. the away from them yeah. to move hosting. So I think that's probably say if you're going to be with the developer make sure you host it yourself or we'll have someone else do the hosting. Yeah. At least then, if there's a problem, you can cut them off and you can move someone else and won't be a problem. I think that's probably a sign of some uh, unscrupulous developers, perhaps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. What happens if you need to get something done? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're, you've got your login details, your hosting details, all that sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think you know part of the reason we, we support Web, WordPress is because you can just take it somewhere else so easily. Um, but you do need to have an understanding of that. You know, I've got a whole other talk on um, the lean startup methodology, if anyone's ever heard of that. And that's all about uh, cyclical processes and about launching a website gathering loads of information and data about that launch and then iterating over and over again. So I do think these things work best when you don't just launch it and walk away. You keep iterating and keep developing it. Whether that's with the same developer or not, is that's, yeah, absolutely, it's a, a, a personal decision. Oh. Also, you touched on HTTPS and HTTP. Yeah. If you, if you use uh, HTTPS and multiple yeah. when you log in and WordPress, um, you can then search your Wireshark page for HTTP contains 
and you can literally see your past <laughs> Right, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was mad that uh, that was so low, that stat, after all these years, yeah. that people aren't using HTTPS. Yeah. Hacker's tip, hey? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, SSL labs. Yeah. Cool. Something it, it um, HTTPS it uh, means that when a, a user visits your site, it tells them that you can't visit the site without HTTPS. Yeah. Means if they come back and visit it, someone's removed your SSL certificate packet, then the browser actually won't let them visit it. Cool. And that's um, on SSL labs. So SSL uh, labs and password security implementation. Yeah. So that's doing stuff like the cycles because all the browsers only support older cycles. Cool. Same with the vulnerable. So that was tested by cell implementation. Great. Cool. Right, Dan is around. Are you yeah. sticking with I'm us here. for the rest if of the afternoon? Wants to <laughs> cool. Have a We've... chat. Yeah. <laughs> so Dan around. is here. So you can always pick him up and you know, yeah. <laughs> interrogate him then.